Y'all ready for the word of God tonight? I looked at the schedule. It looked like we had a pregnant lady that's going to be ministering. <laughs> Hallelujah. How, 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 many, how, how many weeks? How many? 33 weeks? Yeah. So eight months. Eight months. Woo! At the door. Jonah. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Amen. 33,000 weeks. No, it's been a blessing. I just, oh, pregnancy is a miracle. Um, and I don't take it for granted. You guys can sit down. Take it easy. Take a load off. Yeah. Busy week around here. Um, all right, of course, let's open up in prayer. Oh, Papa, we're just so thankful for you, just who you are. You're incredible, and um, your love is unparalleled, God, and there's just nothing like your love. There's nothing like your presence, God. And it is incredible um, what your love can do. So, Father, we just release your perfect love in this place tonight. God, I pray that your people would be encouraged, Father, that you would continue to just release us to a new place of freedom, and a new place of unity, Father, um, just a place in your presence. And, and as a body, as your children, Father, where we just let all the foolishness go where the drama doesn't matter anymore. God, what matters is living for you. So, Father, we just release you in this place. We loose you, Holy Spirit, to have your way for real. Do whatever you want to do. And um, we're just so excited about what you are doing and what you continue to do, Father. And we just want to surrender on greater levels. So um, I just declare right now that every heart is open, every spirit open to receive you. And um, we're just excited about what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. So <laughs> I heard some agreement back there. I like that. Um, so, of course, I want to thank Pastor Tone and um, Pastor Jeanette. Um, so, so grateful for your leadership. So, so grateful for what God is doing in this house because of your obedience and because of your willingness to allow freedom. So, man, I just love you. You know I love you guys. Um, I want to thank my husband. He's watching. He's on baby duty again. Um, I love you, and uh, thank you for just being who you are and being such an amazing husband. I'm glad that uh, God blessed me with you. Our family is awesome. <laughs> And it's about to get even more awesome. Um, and just the team that I'm blessed to work with, man, you guys are family. It's cool uh, to see, like, just the level that we're going to. You know, I've always been grateful for being a part of the Lighthouse and for being on staff here and being a part of the team here. But it's even more, um, we're, we're even more of a family now than we've ever been before. Um, so it's just really, really amazing to uh, be a part of this season here and to see what God is doing. Um, so uh, for those of us who have been around for a little while, who can sense a change? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> He's laughing at me, right? There's been a change. There's been a shift in the atmosphere. And... Um, I mean, it's, it's tangible, right? And, and it's, it's really cool to see that God is just, is just propelling us to this place of freedom, right? And it's, man, it's so exciting. Um, but what I want to talk about is, is really like cultivating that place of freedom and maintaining it because it's really, really cool. You know how stuff can happen. And in the beginning, like we're all fired up about it and we're all excited about it. And then we can get to a place where we get used to it, right? But we don't ever want to get there. <laughs> See, we can, we can cultivate an atmosphere of freedom and we can keep that fire stirred up. 
We can keep that, that atmosphere of celebration going on purpose. All right, we don't have to get stagnant. That's, that's not something that has to happen in this movement. We can continue moving forward. We can continue just jumping in head first into, into rivers of living water that are being released in this place, right? Now, when I think about freedom, like what do you think about when you think about freedom? Like celebration, right? F an atmosphere of freedom is an atmosphere of celebration because there's so much to celebrate when you realize you've been set free. Now, in that, I feel like um, that one of the most important things for us to do to maintain an atmosphere of celebration and freedom is to, is to celebrate one another. Because see, we're celebrating Jesus, right? But we need to be celebrating the Jesus in each other. Because he resides on the inside of each one of us. It's really easy especially when you spend a lot of time with somebody, to start to see their flaws, to start to see all their shortcomings, um, and to begin to meditate on those things, begin to see those as glaring and obvious. But I, I believe that God is calling us to a place where we have his eyes towards each other where we have the spiritual maturity to choose to overlook an offense, to choose to overlook each other's flaws and shortcomings and start to call out the Jesus in one another, right through celebrating each other. Like here's the thing, one of the most important things that I've learned about leadership is that leadership has nothing to do with a position or a title. Leadership has absolutely zero to do with a platform or a microphone. Leadership has everything to do with serving. And, it, and, and here, here's what I believe, that if you are a part of the body of Christ, you are called to be a leader. There's no way that you can be a carrier of the presence of God without being called to be a leader, to be somebody who sets the atmosphere, right? So if that's what you're called to, then you're called to carry the Father's heart for people. And the thing about God is he knows who he is. He's got nothing to prove. So, so the type of fathership that, and the type of leadership that God has towards us is to protect, right? To build up, to equip, to encourage, to see us walking in our full potential. Now, if we're carrying the Father's heart and we're carrying the Spirit of God on the inside, then this is what we're called to be to each other. You know, it's, it's, it's really easy. Again, we've been so conditioned to notice negative stuff. We've been so conditioned to, to be led by our feelings and our emotions. So when somebody hurts us or somebody comes against us, that's glaring, right? And then all of a sudden it becomes hard to love someone. It becomes hard to see the Jesus in someone but God has called us higher and and we talked about this in in class I think yesterday we just had an awesome class um in the faith home it was so good it was one of those classes that you kind of like you get it and you're like oh it's a week-long class and that it was all right but like it ends up being really powerful because we're just like bouncing stuff off of each other but what do you think really brings a change in a person's life? Do you think it's calling out their sin? 
Or do you think it's calling out who God has called them to be? Because I know for me, I knew that I sucked as a human being. <laughs> you didn't have to tell me. You don't have to remind me. I know. But it wasn't until I came here and it was men and women of God who started to call out. I, I mean, I didn't even know it was there. I could not see it. I could not recognize it. I was completely ignorant of what was on the inside of me. But it was them calling out the Jesus Christ in me that made it come to the surface. It wasn't them telling me um, that I blew it again. It wasn't them focusing on all my flaws and shortcomings because, listen, I got a lot. I had even more then, you know, but it was, it was the love of God that said, you are not your mistakes. That made a change that, that has completely transformed my entire life. It was the love of God that said, you are not defined by your past. It was the love of God that said, you are not a junkie. Once an addict, always an addict. You better go somewhere with that lie. It's the love of God that changes things. It's the love of God that changes mindsets, that changes lives completely. And you know, we're called to carry this. We're called to release this. But one of the things that I've noticed is if you can't see it, and guys, I know we just talked about all this, but I'm going somewhere. Like, if you can't see it for yourself, you're not going to be able to release it to anybody else. This is something that, that we have got to get a revelation of how God sees us. It's essential. It's essential of, of, of having an atmosphere of freedom. It's essential for, for even, like, having freedom in your own life living in the fullness and walking in the fullness of what God has for us, you have got to receive that love and that revelation for yourself and see who you are. Because otherwise you're going to be incapable of giving it to someone else. You ever notice that people who are super judgmental and critical, I guarantee you they're 10 times harder on themselves You know, it's time to it's time to grow up. It's time to let the perfect love of God do what only the perfect love of God can do. And remove all these stipulations that we've placed on ourselves and on other people to be perfect. It's not a reality, guys. It's not going to happen. You know, that's why God has given us his grace and given us his love and given us the ability to forgive and to walk in his love, unconditional. You know how scary that is? To say, no matter what you do to me, I love you. <laughs> that's terrifying, right? That's, that's vulnerable. I mean, you're just breaking down all of your self-protection and everything that, you know, keeps you nice and comfortable. But it's not, we're not called for comfort. Sorry, guys. Comfort is nice. And sure, we'll have moments of it. But if you're comfortable all the time, you're probably not doing something right. <laughs> God is a God of kicking people out of their comfort zones. And it's a good thing. He does his deepest work in the uncomfortable parts, right? So we're entering into the year of Jubilee, I believe. We are now the Lighthouse Freedom Center. There is an obvious spirit of freedom that's being released in this place. Um, and I truly believe that it's in our treatment of one another that's going to continue it moving forward and take it to another level that we can't even imagine. What's going to happen when we unify? 
when we're for real in one mind and one accord. Listen, I want to see the glory of God fall so that we're all on our faces and we can't even (laughs) stand up in his presence. I want to see a junkie walk in dope sick and a couple hours later walk out set free on fire (laughs) speaking in tongues, right? I want to see people getting up out of wheelchairs and walking for the first time in years. I want to see cancer getting healed and going back to the pit of hell where it belongs right here in this place. There are too many people hurting, too many people dying for us to be caught up in drama and foolishness, right? I mean, come on, man. We're called to release heaven. We're called to carry and release the kingdom of God wherever we go. But if I'm getting offended at you because you talked out of the side of your neck at me, what are we like really focusing on? What are we spending our time on? If I'm getting upset because I didn't get picked, um, you know, for, for a position or a title, like, listen, it's not about any of that. You can do more in Walmart standing in line than you can do here. It's, it's the way that we live our lives. It's the way that we walk this thing out. It's not about your smile on your face when you come into church and you're standing in front of the pastor. Who are you behind closed doors? What's your motivation for doing what you're doing? And there's no condemnation in this, guys, because we've all been there. I've had God check me where where he's like, he's like, are you doing this so that you can be seen or are you doing this so I can be seen? And thank God. Thank God for his correction. Thank God that he checks me and he tells me and he reveals what my motivations are because sometimes I don't even know it until he reveals it, right? I think I'm walking in the, in the pure motives, but really, if I'm getting offended, if I'm getting frustrated, right? If I'm getting in condemnation, then what's really going on in here? You know, these are the things that we got to look at, guys. And, and like I said, it's not comfortable, but it's worth it. Because I, I have spent, I've wasted so much time being offended. And I've wasted so much time trying to do stuff in my own strength. And I've wasted so much time making it about me. Well, that's not true. There's nothing wasted in the kingdom. Because it was all a part of the process, and it's all a part of the process that's, that, that has taught me and led me to a place of being able to let that stuff go. It's still, I'm still in it. You know, I, I'm not saying I've got it down and I've got it all together. But it's a desire of my heart for real to see this stuff removed from, from me, to see this stuff removed from us. To see us for real walking in the power of unity, walking in the power of the love of God. Because when that happens, heaven is released. You know, but we spend so much time tearing each other down. We spend so much time being offended and and gossiping and just we got to stop. You know, I don't know about you, but I used to, I used to get, um, I have pregnant brain right now. Um, you know, that, that competitive spirit where you see somebody else getting promoted and you're threatened by it. I used to feel that way. 
I did. I struggled with that for a long time. I used to compare my gifts to other people's gifts, and my gifts weren't good enough when I compare it, when I put it next to theirs, right? So I would feel threatened. I mean, just let's be real. But I've come to a place in my life where I realize, listen, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. My gifts are my gifts, and they're totally unique, and nobody else has them. Your gifts are your gifts, and they're totally unique, and nobody else can bring what you can bring. There's no comparison. Man does that. The world does that. God doesn't do that. God delights in who you are. So we've got to come to a place of being able to celebrate ourselves so that we can celebrate each other. I'm to the point now where, listen, I want to see, it's my heart, man. I want to see people built up. I want to see people raised up and trained up to walk in their purpose and walk in their calling. And I'm not threatened by it anymore because I realized that that is just an illusion. You know, your success is my success. You know, in a, with a father's heart, what is the desire of a parent for their children to see them exceed anything that they've ever done, right? To see them go farther than they've ever gone. That's the heart we're called to carry towards one another. There's no such thing as competition in the kingdom. I want to see you succeed. I want to see you go far. Because like I said, we're all part of the same body. When you cry, I cry. When you rejoice, I rejoice. When you succeed, I succeed. I'm cool with standing in the background, you know? I'm cool with it now. I didn't used to be. I felt like, like if I wasn't in the spotlight or if I wasn't um, doing the things that I loved, then I wasn't called anymore. But that was a lie from the enemy that was trying to keep me in insecurity, right? That was trying to keep me from the calling of carrying a mother's heart towards the people that are coming up behind me. Can you imagine if we let go of all the insecurities and all the competition and all the, the drama and the foolishness? And we started to build each other up. We started to encourage one another. We started to say, hey, I see Jesus in you even when you don't behave like it. I want to see what happens when we cultivate that environment, when we cultivate that atmosphere. I want to see what happens when somebody who's been sitting in a seat for the last 10 years stands up and starts to operate in their giftings and their callings. Not one person in here is called to sit in a seat. God has placed something on the inside of you that the body needs. And I want this to be a place where we call that out in each other, where you can come here and this is a place of freedom. You can be free to find out what your calling is. You can be free to find out what your giftings are. You can be free to make mistakes and blow it. And we're still going to lift you up and encourage you. Right? That's what freedom is. It's not about being perfect. It's not. Sometimes it's messy. God's not afraid of the mess. We don't need to be either. You know, it's okay. So, in Romans 12, 16 through 18, and yes, I'm reading out of the Passion. It says, live happily together in a spirit of harmony and be as mindful of another's worth as you are your own. Listen, that means you have to be mindful of your own worth. Don't live with a lofty mindset thinking you are too important to serve others. But be willing to do menial tasks and identify with those who are humble-minded. 
Don't be smug or even think for a moment that you know it all. <laughs> oh, you will get checked. Never hold a grudge or try to get even, but plan your life around the noblest way to benefit others. Do your best to live as everybody's friend. This is what we're called to. I'm not saying be somebody's trash can and, and put yourself in abusive situations because we're not called to that. But we are called to love. And we are called to forgive. We are called to be unified. In uh, Romans 14, 13, it says, so stop being critical and condemning of other believers, but instead determine to never deliberately cause a brother to stumble and fall because of your actions. Do you know how many times I've like, because I've been too self-centered, I've been too wrapped up in myself and how things make me feel. Um to realize that I was putting a stumbling block in front of someone else. And when I think back about it now, I mean, again, I know there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So I don't receive condemnation, but I do receive the correction of it. That I, it's time for us to get out of ourselves and start really focusing on the impact that we're having it's not about how we feel. You know, a lot of times we got to choose peace over being right. A lot of times it's, it's, you know, we're called to choose peace over being understood. That's maturity. It's not about being right. It's not about being vindicated. Because do you want to know what God's vindication is? God's vindication is to see that very person that is hurting you set free. <laughs> that very person that's coming against you, redeemed. That's God's vindication. That very person that you have the hardest time getting along with, and I mean just you got to like start praying in tongues when you see him walk into the room, that very person being your soul sister or brother for life. I've seen it happen in my own life, man. Where I mean people that I just had the hardest time with have become my sisters, have become my brothers, like we're family. There's no going back from that. That's the vindication of God. So when you're all praying, smite my enemies, you better watch. <laughs> it's not what you think. <laughs> it goes on to say in verse 19, so then make it your top priority to live a life of peace with harmony in your relationships, eagerly seeking to strengthen and encourage one another. So we know that we're all a part of the same body. But the cool part is, is that we are so intricate and so unique and so individual, but when it all comes together, it works together in perfect harmony. That's crazy, right? I mean, to think of like the fact that, okay, like you yourself, there's never been another you and never will be another you in all of existence. I mean, it's mind boggling. It's like, like as deep as the universe. Right? There's just no end to, to trying to figure that one out. And yet we're so different. We're so unique. We're so individual. But we're created to function as one. And this is what God is calling us to. To function in that, in that perfect harmony. Like that song, Lead Me Back. The harmony on that thing was so beautiful. 
But we're called to operate in, in that in every day, everyday life, right? Functioning together as one, strengthening one another, not weakening each other. You know, we're called to protect each other. When the accuser rises up and tries to tell you something negative about your brother and sister, you fight for them. You fight for them. You say, no, I don't believe that. In the name of Jesus, that is not who they are. You know, we can rebuke this stuff. We have the authority on the inside of us to not give in to it. To stand up and fight for our brothers and our sisters and say, no, I'm not going to believe that about them. I'm going to call out the Jesus in them. It's not easy. I'm not saying, I'm not saying by any stretch that this is something that, that is going to just bam happen. But it's something that we can start to practice on purpose. It's something that we can begin to cultivate on purpose with one another to build each other up, to encourage each other, to start to speak things that are positive over one another. You know, I so many people come in here hurting and broken, and the last thing they need is somebody to be rude or mean who's supposed to be a man or a woman of God. You're, we're representations of Jesus. You know, people look to us to see Jesus. And I think that that's the problem that the world is having with the church today is that they've looked to the church, but they haven't seen Jesus. They've seen religion. That's not Jesus. But I also see this movement that's happening, not just here, but in the entire body of Christ. I see a generation rising up that, that is saying no more to the religious ideals that the body of Christ has been operating in, but says yes to truly walking in the love of God. To letting go of all of those rules and judgments and, and the condemnation that we've shown to sinners. That's not what Jesus did. Matter of fact, the only people Jesus ever got upset with were the Pharisees and the Sadducees, right? I love him. I see it happening. I see it happening here. And I just wanted to um, encourage you guys tonight that, you know, this is where God is taking us. And the, and the thing about it is, is it's our decision if we're going to go or not. Crazy, right? that like the, the spirit of God can be moving in a room and there are people who will never experience it standing right there in the midst. It's a travesty. It's a travesty, man. Because I'm telling you, one taste, one touch, you'll never be the same. But I just know, I know that I know that I know that it's in our treatment of each other, our love for one another, that his spirit will be released like never before, like we've never, ever seen before. I'm hungry for it. I am so hungry for it. And I can see it. I mean, I can see it. I can see the outcome. I see the vision of what I'm talking about. And I see that... Oh, I, I, I wish I could describe it. It's something that God has placed in my heart, something that's been burning in my heart for quite a while. And um, it's really exciting because I'm seeing, I'm seeing like the manifestation, the beginning of the manifestation of it. It is so exciting. Um, but man, it's up to us. It's up to us how, f how fast this thing is going to come. It's up to us how quickly we move into the manifestation of unity and the perfect love of God. It's totally up to us. We don't get to pick our family. Sorry. You don't get to pick. 
You don't get to say you're invited, but you're not. God picks your family. All right? So no matter how uncomfortable it can get or how messy it can get, this level of freedom and this level of unity is attainable. When we make a decision to move forward as one, when we make a decision to start communicating about problems and issues and learning how to talk to one another instead of talk about each other, watch what happens. Watch what happens. You know, we, they've always called us the best kept secret of Riverview. I don't want to be a secret anymore. There's too much stuff going on in here that the world needs. But I'm telling you, if we can get on this boat together, if we can get in one mind and one accord and we start to sow unity, we start to sow love, we start to sow encouragement into one another, watch them come flooding in. The world needs this. The world needs what, what we have and what we carry and where we're going. There are too many people out there that are lost. That have, just like I did, because they can't see it. And have no idea that it's even there. That it's even available. That freedom and love and forgiveness is even available. I had no idea that when I set foot through those doors, I thought I was just going to get a hot meal and a bed to sleep in. I had no idea that the love of God was going to wreck my life completely. This is what we carry, and this is what we have to offer. But it all starts right here with us. It all starts in our day-to-day -day decision. There's nothing wrong with being wrong. There's nothing wrong with apologizing to one another and humbling ourselves. There's nothing wrong with serving each other with rejoicing in one another, with encouraging one another. This is stuff that we have to purposely cultivate. Hebrews 10, 24 says, discover creative ways to encourage others and to motivate them towards acts of compassion, doing beautiful works as expressions of love. Just think about it. In the day-to-day, -day, if you start to make decisions, what can I do? What can I do today to encourage someone else? What can I do today to call out the giftings in someone else? What can I do today to build someone else up? Get out of your head. You know, it's not about us. It's so gross when it's all self-centeredness and... So small. The world is so small when you live there. Talking from experience. But we can begin to make daily decisions. If you did something yesterday, said something hateful, go to the person today and ask for forgiveness. Watch what happens. Watch the freedom that you experience in your own heart when you begin to do that. This is what God has called us to, guys, and it's not for the weak. It's not. The world's version of weak and the kingdom's version of weak are totally opposite. This takes strength of spirit. This takes intimacy with the Lord. Right? Get your foundation, man. Get the love of God for yourself so that you can release it and start to change the atmosphere wherever you set foot so that you can see heaven goes wherever you go. So that you can see the most hateful people begin to melt like wax under the love that you release over them. This is what we're called to. That's freedom. Where you don't have to walk around questioning people's motives. You don't have to walk around wondering like, like, 
you know, trying to take control of everything. You can just be free to love because it doesn't matter. Right? So do we have, do we have a prayer team? Okay, so I want to do something a little different. I want to call up the prayer team tonight. And um, if you need encouragement, if, if you need encouragement, if you need to know that you're loved, if you need to know that you're amazing, yeah, yeah. I, I just really, whoever comes up for um, as the prayer team, I want to encourage you guys to hear from the Lord, right? And, and, and begin to call out things in your brothers and sisters that they might not be able to see. Something that God sees that they might not be able to see. So if you guys could come up. Um, and Joelle, if you could just like prophesy in your singing. I just want to open it up. Everybody, let's stand to our feet. And just really begin to, to worship in this time. Really begin to release um, any hurts that you're holding on to. Release offenses that you're holding on to. Release unforgiveness that you might be holding on to. And if you need encouragement, don't be ashamed to come up here. God wants to heal your heart tonight. God wants to touch you in this place tonight.
What a word. Amen. Thank you, Nikki. Powerful word. You know, she's right. It all starts with us. Us being unified, unity, building each other up. I mean, that is the key to growing this church, growing this ministry. Because if we're fighting one another, the growth is on hold. Amen. But as soon as we get it together, watch out. Amen. Amen. Have y'all been blessed? My God. Amen. All right, I'm going to be listening to y'all. Don't be tearing nobody down. Build them up. Amen. Amen. Let's lift our hands up to the Lord. Father, we just thank you for that powerful word tonight. Oh, Father God, uh, help us, Father God, to walk in that love, in that unity. Help us to see the Jesus in, the, in one another. And, Father God, to call it forth. And, Father God, we thank you, Father God, that it starts with us, Father God. It starts in this body, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We heard it, we receive it, and now we're going to do it, Father. We thank you for it now.